many here read the Charisma magazine? Amen. And um, if you don't, you really should get, you know, subscribe to it because it really is a good magazine. Um, you know, and we are privileged to have her here. Marcel called and asked if we would like to have Jennifer here. And you know, it's funny. We wanted her to come to be one of the guest speakers for Women on the Front Line. And, um, and so it didn't happen. But God, you know, God always sets our calendar up. And the Lord wanted her here. And then when you call, I said, oh, this is so God, right? And so uh, we are so pleased to have Jennifer LeClaire. So would you come on up? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I love this woman. She's awesome. Hallelujah. We have we like uh, we have, we like the same things casting out devils and praising the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Anybody here got any devils? Anybody in this section have devils? Raise your hand. No. No. I got my eye on a few over here, Pastor. You know how I know the ones of you that have devils because when I ask that, you get nervous. You start looking at your watch. You got to go to the bathroom all of a sudden. Oh boy! Hallelujah! Can we just pray for a minute? Oh, Hashiketim Roboste. Y'all know how to pray in the Holy Ghost? Would you pray with me for just a minute? Hallelujah! Oh, Shakatan Roboste Heshe. Korobaste Ketim Roboste. Jesus, you are King and you are Lord. Oh, Shakatan Roboste. I just feel like some of you have been going through a season of disruption. Who's been going through a season of disruption? Uh, wave at me. You've been going through a season of disruption. I see a three pronged attack that has come against your life. We're going to tear it down today. We're going to tear it down today. Let me tell you something, ma'am. The reason why you've seen a season of disruption is because there's about to, to be a season of eruption of God's glory in your life. I'm here to tell you today. Oh, God is bringing it about. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. But every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, it shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. The disruption is worth it. The chaos is worth it. Because we're about to see divine order. We're about to see a recalibration. We're about to see an eruption of God's glory in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it, God. What you want to do in my life, God, I surrender to you with everything on the inside of me. Lord, remove the lid. Take the cover off, God. Whatever is in me that is not like you, would you deliver me, God, because I need you and I need my country and my family to be saved. It's all about right here. It starts right here. Right here. It starts right here. Bend me. Roberts Laird, the author of God's Generals, he wrote, it was the very next month that Roberts, young Roberts, Evan Roberts, had his first vision. He was strolling in a garden, and he looked up to what seemed to be a, an arm outstretched, being lifted up to heaven. He said, we are going to see the mightiest revival that Wales has ever known. And the Holy Spirit is coming just now. He said, we must get ready. And I'm here to tell you, God sent me to tell you today, by the Spirit of the Living One, the Holy One of Israel, we are about to see the greatest revival the world has ever known. The awakening is here, and it's coming, it's here, and it's coming. Oh, the Lord would say to you today that we must get ready. The Lord told me in 2007, before we had a great recession, before we had all these doom and gloom prophets cursing our nation, before we saw all the things we're seeing today, same-sex marriage being sanctified and all these things, he said there'll be a third great awakening. I'll never forget it. I wrote it down. 2007. He said it would get darker before the light shined brightly again in the nation. And it's gotten darker. But the Isaiah 60 says where there's great darkness, there will be great glory. But we must be fully awake. And there's a spirit, there's an enemy called Jezebel that comes to twist and pervert the prophetic voice that comes to shut it up in the name of Jesus. I don't care that Jezebel doesn't like my message. I don't care about the retaliation I'm going to get later. You know why? You know why? Because I am the retaliation. Oh, Hallelujah! I don't play patty cake with devils and I don't run and hide. Because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Hallelujah! Oh, am I in the right place today? Hallelujah! Jesus. 
the pastor of the church let him start holding meetings on October 31st. The meetings turned into a two-week revival marked by fervent faith, strong intercession, and late-night services, prayer services that sometimes lasted until morning. What would it be like if we started praying all night again? What would it be like if we started tearing once again? Hallelujah. Amen. We've got to be about the Father's business. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know I'm preaching to the choir. Amen. <laughs> Those meetings ignited a revival that spread across the world, including Azusa Street in Los Angeles. But it wasn't too long before young Evan cracked under the strain of the pressure. Roberts, Evan, uh, Roberts Laird, in 1905, he writes this, in 1905, Robert's mind became confused. Remember that I said that. Confused from physical and mental exhaustion. He began hearing conflicting voices in his head and doubted his ability to distinguish the voice of the Spirit among them. I mean, this was a man that God used to set a nation on fire. He had visions. He had, he had prophetic insight. And all of a sudden, he's like, am I even called? Did I hear the Lord? Right, right. What am I even doing? I might as well just quit. That's Jezebel. That's Jezebel. You were on fire for God a minute ago. What happened? It's the subtle hijacked. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he would rebu rebuke his listeners for being not pure of heart. He just cracked. The revival finally fizzled out in 1905 when the spirit of Jezebel, listen, operating through Jesse Penn Lewis, a Welsh evangelical speaker and author, beguiled, beguiled, bewitched, seduced. Hear me. Young Roberts, Penn Lewis seduced and deceived the revivalist in the prime of his anointing. She sought to ride on his coattails. Right, right. Remember that I said that. Ironically, this Jezebelic woman flattered him. <clears throat> Remember that I said that. Flattered him. Oh, I don't know why pastor won't let you on the worship team. You're so anointed. He just doesn't see you the way I do. Flattery. See, somebody doesn't flatter you unless they want something from you. I'm not talking about a nice, sincere compliment. I like nice, sincere compliments. I give nice, sincere compliments. I mean to tell you when somebody is buttering you up. Why are they buttering you up? Because they want something from you. Right. Don't fall for it. Her smooth words did not heal his soul. He suffered, listen, a nervous breakdown in his early 20s. A nervous breakdown. And he went to live at this wealthy woman's home to recover. So he went to live in Jezebel's house. Let me say something to you prophetically. Is it okay if I get bold prophetically? There's too many prophets today in the body of Christ living in Jezebel's house. Amen. Amen. Yes, Jezebel had 850 eating at her table. Paid it. Pay for it. There's too many prophets today eating from Jezebel's table. On Jezebel's payroll. Right, right. So I'm grateful for houses like this that are healthy and teach you and equip you to discern right from wrong, to flow in the right spirit. Amen. Amen. And don't get me wrong, please. There's many wonderful, awesome prophetic ministries, but there are some tears. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Been sown. Robert Slaird, he said, they built their home around his needs, including a bedroom, a prayer room, and a private stairway. It was there that the great revivalist, listen, was confined to a bed for more than a year. Remember that I said that. Evan became ever more isolated and reclusive. Right. Remember that I said that. And he refused to see friends and eventually family. He allowed this woman with the Jezebel spirit operating uh, to dictate who he would see and what he would do. What does that sound like? Uh, control. control. You guys are sharp on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> they wrote a number of books together, including the, the first one, War of the Saints, published in 1913. She started, she said the book was birthed from six years of prayer and testing the truth. Within a year after the book was published, Roberts denounced it. He was quoted as saying it had been a failed weapon, which had confused and divided the Lord's people. And this is the part that really just rocks me. Listen to this. Although he lived to be 72, Evan Roberts stopped preaching in his early 20s. Right, right, right. Can you imagine? 50 some odd years remembering when. Mm. Remembering moving in the power of God, the anointing of God. That's Jezebel. Mm. 
Jezebel wants to cut off your voice, but I say no. Amen. What do you say? No. Amen. It's not going to happen. But here's the thing. You know, we think we know what Jezebel is because we've been taught for many years that it's the spirit of control and manipulation. I submit to you that it's not the spirit of control and manipulation. Jezebel operates in manipulation and control. We read about Jezebel, what Jezebel really is in Revelation 2 and 20. But let me just say, Old Testament, New Testament. In the Old Testament, we see Jezebel's first king, second kings, right? She was a queen. She was a prophet killer. She was a murderer. She went after Naboth's vineyard for Ahab. She usurped his authority. And she, you know, the prophets were hidden in caves, uh, you know, that she might not cut off their voice, not, might not murder them. Obadiah hid them there. She was a schemer. She was a, she was a whore. She, was a, she had a religious spirit. She was very religious. She would worship Baal and Ashtoreth. She was a very wicked queen, and I hear, I hear the, oh, Jennifer, you know, you know, sister, you don't have to talk about Jezebel, and you know, there's no Jezebel spirit in the Bible, I don't see it, I see the mute spirit and the unclean spirit, oh, sister. Okay, you religious spirit. <laughs> That's what religious spirits sound like. Oh, you know, the whiny. Because <laughs> you, you, you hear them, right? Oh. Well, here's the thing. We call it Jezebel because we need a common vernacular with which to identify what we're talking about. Essentially, Jezebel is a spirit of seduction. The Bible says in Revelation 2 and 20, here you read Jezebel's coming to the church of Thyatira, and he's like, good job, guys. I know your works, your service, your faith, your love, and the latter is greater than the first. Hallelujah. And they're like, yay, Jesus likes us. And all of a sudden he says, but I have a few things against you. And they're like, uh-oh. He said that you tolerate that woman Jezebel, that you tolerate, right. that you put up with, that you refuse to deal with. You don't want to have to deal with the drama and the tears, the waterworks. You don't want to have to deal with the backlash and the retaliation. You don't want to confront it. You don't want to deal with it. After all, they sing real good. <laughs> They're the biggest givers in the church. Just let it be. I have a few things against you that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Oh boy. So I'm not against titles. Please don't get me wrong. But when you've got to have five of them strung together in a certain order and you get offended when someone leaves one out, you might have a little bit of an issue. Right. Doctor, chief, apostle, most high, exalted prophet, grandmaster, poobah. <laughs> Can I say that? I just did. I am an editor. I'm the editor of Charisma. I need to learn how to sometimes edit myself. You'll notice if I ever slow down, it's because I'm editing myself. <laughs> Praise God. Who calls herself a prophet is to do what? And here's the essence of the Jezebel spirit. To teach and seduce my servants. To commit immorality, that's not just sexual violence, it's all immorality. And eat things sacrificed to idols. So Jezebel will seduce you, wants to seduce you away from your first love, wants to seduce you away from that intimate place, wants to seduce you away from your call into idolatry and immorality. Wants to seduce you into sin and then beat you up when you sin. Wants to seduce you into that place of perversion and then make you so ashamed that you won't release that prophetic word because who am I to speak for the Lord after I just sinned? See, it's this vicious cycle. We're going to cut that off in Jesus' name. I've written three books on this spirit, different aspects of it. Mostly I've dealt with it at the principality level. But I've dealt with it more and more on the ground level now. Why? Because it's, because it's become more active. Because people who are hurt and wounded have this, these open doors for Jezebel. See, anybody can come under the influence of this thing. Anybody. Anybody. So we not, There's too many Jezebel accusations running around in the body of Christ. Too many people say, you're a Jezebel. No, that's just a strong woman with a strong personality. Yeah, maybe she needs to go read How to Win Friends and Influence People or, you know, just tone it down a little bit. But that don't make her Jezebel. Guess what, guys? You, you're not immune. They didn't like that, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> Anybody can tap into this thing. Right. So I've written it, but the Spirit's been coming into my ministry because we have a prophetic swirl like you have here, and that it attracts. Y'all got anybody got a Jezebel spirit? <laughs> I'm sure you don't. 
It's those ones you invited that didn't come today. <laughs> You'll tell them all about it later. Praise God. It's okay to laugh in church. Amen. Three times the spirit, more than that now, three times. The first time I was, I was in a, a church, an apostolic church, and they, this is where I learned about Jezebel. And, but I, I, after some years, many years, like eight years, I realized, oh my gosh, the spirit is operating in the leadership. Amen. Right. The right. girls were getting pregnant. The single girls on the worship were getting pregnant. The guys were out getting drunk on the mission field. And I'm like, my Lord, immorality, idolatry. So I got out of there. And, of course, they accused me of being a Jezebel. That's what Jezebel does. Amen. Then the, this other guy, he wanted to date me, and I didn't want to have nothing to do with him. And my friend finally said, you're just being a snob. I could slap her. That was when I first felt the slapping anointing come up upon me. <laughs> yes, I, I, for real. I was like, yeah. You know, Smith Wigglesworth had the had, Wigglesworth had the punching anointing. He said, I'm not punching you. I'm punching that demon on the inside of you. Healed. I like that. <laughs> I don't think I'd do it. But I think it's cool. And I said, he says, oh, I want to go out with you. Finally, my friend, you're being a snob. So I went out with him, and he very quickly decided that I was his wife, and he began to make sexual advances toward me. And so I did what you would do, Mom. I went, come out, in Jesus' name. <laughs> See, the guys aren't laughing. <laughs> and he ran. He never came back. Bless the Lord. <laughs> So it can operate through a man. It's that immorality. And then most recently we had one that came through our ministry over the course of the last year. And, and it, when she was highly recommended by someone from a, a very large prayer ministry, if I name the ministry, you'd know the ministry. And very high, the, the, someone the leadership there who had served with her had gone on. He said, you got to have her. She's awesome. She's great. She'll really transform your ministry. She's really wonderful. And so I let down all the guards, which was dumb. I don't care who recommends somebody to you. You have to they have to go through the motions. There's a reason for the protocols. And so this is not just about her, this one. I've had a, a number of them, but here's a compilation. And see, here's the thing. We're never going to successfully deal with the spirit in the, in the principality level if we can't deal with it on the ground level. And really, honestly, it's, it's sometimes it's easier to deal with on the principality level. Right. over your own life right. than to deal with a person who has the spirit who your heart breaks for because you want to see them free. <coughs> but they have to choose to repent. Amen. So let's talk about how Jezebel operates here. People influenced by a Jezebel spirit, and I say that because I don't like to say they got a Jezebel spirit. They're just being influenced by it. It's a principality, not like a fear spirit. No, it's different. They, they have fear issues, and, and they use control and manipulation to ease those fears and the fear of rejection. They fear they, they feel they can't be hurt or wounded if they control things. That's why they control. Because they're afraid. Right. Exactly. Number two, people influenced by Jezebel spirit, they target the leader. Have you ever noticed that? Whether it's in the workplace or the church, they target the leader. They usually offer to help where the help is most needed. They'll do the job nobody wants to do just to get close to the leader. Why? Because the leader can protect them. Think about it. If you've got somebody, you're leading a ministry in the church, or you're leading a department in your workplace, and somebody comes along, they're helping, they're helping, they're being a blessing, they're being a blessing. And then someone comes to you and says, I think they got a bad spirit. You can be like, they have a wonderful spirit. They're helping me all the time. You've got the bad spirit. You're accuser of the brethren. But you're going to protect that one that's near you. you know, because that spirit, that Jezebel spirit, it hides from the leadership. It hides and it manifests. Everybody else can see it but you. <laughs> Many times till you see it. People influenced by Jezebel spirit make false covenants that they don't intend to keep in order to gain position. Right, right. This one came in, that one that was recommended. She says, oh, I see you on the front lines of the media. Hallelujah, I see you traveling. Bless the Lord, I'll stand with you. I'll fight for you. I'll war with you. I got your back. Praise God. I'll be with you till Jesus comes back. <laughs> I said, dear God, I've known you five minutes. <laughs> See, people that want to enter into covenants with you that quickly, that's just not normal. Right. you got to be careful. You don't quickly go into alignments like that. You know, who you're aligned with, it impacts your life. Yes. Oh, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Word. Word. And when you align, when you tolerate, and you align with, and you form soul ties with a person operating in this Jezebel spirit, you open a portal of hell over your life. Right. I'm going right. to get to that in a minute. 
And then she says, oh, people have to tell me to leave ministries. <laughs> Last three ministries I was at, they, they, told me, they told me I should go. So my time was up. <clears throat> ding, 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 ding. That should have been my big red flag. Right. I didn't see it. Why? Because soulish compassion, listen, it blocks discernment. She was hurt. She was wounded. She had been abused. And, and she had been, uh, you know, sick and infirmed her whole life. She had overcome, finally, a, a horrible autoimmune de deficiency and disease. And she had gotten a breakthrough, but she had been just crushed her whole life. And I felt sorry for her. But see, it's not the compassion of your soul that's going to deliver somebody. It's the compassion of Christ that's going to deliver somebody. And when you move over into pity, your discernment just goes out the window. We can't do that. We've got to show the love of Christ, not our human love. Amen. People influenced by Jezebel spirit, they seem spiritual to outsiders. They come in talking about their prayer life and their fasting. Oh, they're so much more spiritual than everybody else. They see four angels over in that corner and three witchcraft spirits over in that corner. And they're prophesying to everybody all the time over in the that parking lot. Right, right, right. Y'all got parking lot prophets in the Northeast. Right, right, right. <laughs> I remember we had, we've got a prophetic ministry and I would be prophesying over everybody at the altar and all of a sudden I'd see her one by one taking them over there in the back and prophesying over right, right, right. Like what, what more? I mean, you know, they got what they need. What more? Like why you always do it? Because they want to draw people to themselves. Want to draw. She says, oh, the Lord's told me. Oh, the Lord's told me it's time for me to, to, to do a, a, a Bible study. I'm going to do it with the, you know, with the house of prayer. We're going to have a Bible study on the end times. I said, no, well, the Lord's not saying that to me. She says, oh, but the Lord told me I, I need to do it at my house. And, and I said, you don't have parking. You, you can't, practically, you can't do that. Oh, but the Lord told me. I said, well, guess what, honey? The Lord didn't tell me, praise God. Yeah. Oh, well, he will. She <laughs> said, subtle, manipulative. You want to know how to quit this way to see the Jezebel spirit manifest? You know, Colleen? You say no. Right, right. <laughs> Talk about a windstorm. <laughs> praise God. People influenced by Jezebel spirit, they seek to isolate the leader from others who can speak into their lives and especially target those who are prophetic. Remember Evan Roberts, he was isolated. He was isolated. This one that came in was so wounded and so hurt. And I thought, well, I'd walk so many people through this. I could walk her through it. But she was just, just really manipulating me, just isolating me. My mom was like, why don't you call me on Sunday anymore? You know, my friends are like, we can't ever reach you anymore. Why? Because this one was just sucking the life out of me, draining my time. And she would get a breakthrough, and you'd say, okay, we did she's got a breakthrough now. We're going to keep keep pressing. You'd see some fruit, and then it's like, you don't like me anymore. I don't know what you're... I just, oh, I'm not a pastor. I don't have that much of that. I've got compassion, but that pastoral grace, dear God, help me. I'll pray for me. They isolate. They pit people against each other in the ministry. This one, every time I'd go out and travel on the road, I'd get an evil report. Oh, the worship leader did this, and the intercessory prayer leader did that, and this one over here did this, and she chased them all the way. I lost two worship leaders. I lost the Israel mandate leader. I, I almost lost uh, a couple of other leaders, and then after she left, finally, they would come back to me and tell me what was going on. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you say something to me? Well, we didn't think you'd hear us because we saw that you were on a mission, a rescue mission. You've got to make sure that the people around you feel like they can come to you right. and share. People who threaten them are chased up and chased out. People influenced by a Jezebel spirit, they play the victim. They want your pity. That's the currency. That's part of the manipulation. They want you to feel sorry for them. They're never wrong. The problem is always with someone else and never them. Right, right. The people influenced by the Jezebel spirit, they seem humble, but it's a false humility. It's a religious spirit. So why people sometimes they can't tell the difference. Is it Jezebel or religion? Because there's similar characteristics. It's both controlling, both manipulative, both religious witchcraft. 2 Kings 9 talks about Jezebel and her witchcrafts. So that spirit released witchcraft at you. They feel really self-important. They feel entitled. See, because people who have been hurt and wounded, they do have an entitlement spirit. they got a chip on their shoulder. They feel like the world owes them something. Right. They have to have their way and they'll manipulate to get it. People influenced by a Jezebel spirit will not be accountable to anyone. They might act like they're accountable, but then they go and do what they want to anyway. Right. And if you try to bring accountability, 
Then they flip the script and accuse you of being a Jezebel. Controlling. Controlling. This one that we had, I'll never forget, I had had three encounters with the Lord through different men and women of God. And the Lord gave me a strategy, told me what to do, how to, how to press in somewhere I really wanted to go. So I started getting up at 4 in the morning. And I told everybody, I told my whole staff, look, um, um, 8 o'clock, my phone shuts off. You need me? You got between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. I'm done. I'm, I'm going after the Lord. I'm getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm pressing in. I'm going after him hard and nothing's going to get in my way. Well, this one with the Jezebel spirit, she, she, she would always, you know, oh, yeah. No, you don't like me anymore. You don't want to answer your phone after eight. I told you I'm going after the Lord. Oh, but you don't like. She came over to my house one day. But you know, these things have changed, and I just felt I was getting such a breakthrough, and now I just don't know what I'm gonna do. And I just didn't. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, I like you just fine. Did we talked about this yesterday. <laughs> 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9.30, and I'm getting agitated. It was 10.30, I mean, because she's crying, and I felt sorry for her. You would have smacked her? You got the smacking anointing? Lay hands on me, sister. <laughs> And I'm like, it was 10.30, and I told my, I called one of my intercessors in Kentucky who's, who's walked closely with me for a long time, and I said, I, said, I told her what happened. She says, she says, girl, that's what they say in Kentucky. Girl? Do they? She said, girl? She said, give her a box of tissue and say, cry yourself a river, honey. I'm going to bed. Oh. I said, I can't do that. I'm like too nice. I woke up the next morning and I was I was mad. I was angry because I realized that this was an assignment against me going higher in the Lord. And I finally saw it. I didn't see that it was Jezebel, but I saw that this was an assignment. I said, oh, no. And I was mad. I was more mad at myself than anything. And so I just sort of kept to myself for a few days because I didn't want to respond to her in anger. Father, you're not know, talking to me in three days. I said, you know what? I said, I said I'm sure you, I know you're a lovely person. You're, you, I know you love the Lord. I know you've been through a lot, and, and you've seen so much breakthrough, and I'm so thrilled for that. I said, but sometimes I feel, see, and I'm not making an accusation because I'm talking about how I feel. I said, sometimes I feel, like, you know, the other night when, you know, I've got to get up in the morning, and you're crying over something we talked about in the last several days, and you just keep on it. I said, sometimes I feel like you're manipulating me, and sometimes I feel controlled. Oh! <gasps> Oh, I just can't. Oh, I just can't. Oh, I just can't. Oh, my gosh. And the, well, that was just dumb because that, you know, major waterworks. That's why people don't want to confront the spirit because it's just drama. Yeah. One way or another, it's some drama. <laughs> Worse than a soap opera. And she says, I just can't. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm sorry. I just, I have to tell you how I feel. Well, she just then would not speak to me for about a week. I'd check on her. She would speak. I was very concerned she may have killed herself because she was that distraught. I, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, is she even okay? She won't answer. She won't answer anybody else. I'm like, what is going on? I'm getting very worried. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm going through this trial where this pastor, it wasn't even a pastor. It was a businessman in my community. I met like maybe three or four years ago one time, decided to start spreading rumors around the city that I had the Jezebel spirit. Now, this was a principality working. I did not know him. He contacted Charisma, told them I had a Jezebel spirit. He contacted my spiritual father. He contacted the healing rooms ministers who I served with and who handed me their ministry. And they're all like, they knew he was a troublemaker in years past. So they had a history. They knew. And they're like rebuking him and, you know, in a nice way. I mean, they weren't like being nasty about it, but they were trying to deal with this. I was talking with different generals in the body of Christ saying, this is a spirit. I mean, I, I, I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So I'm there like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. You're And I'm like going through all this. And all she pops up in the middle of this and goes, I need to talk to you today. Now this is all general. This is an assignment. This is a Jezebel spirit attacking me through this man who later did repent. Bless the Lord. Amen. He later did repent. But she says, 
I, did, I said, I can't talk to you. Today. I'm going through this big thing. I'm meeting with pastors. You know, some of the prophets in the nation are telling me I need to get, get an attorney because he's slandering me. I said, I'm trying to pray. I don't want. She says, I need to talk to you today. And I said, I can't. So next day, I need to talk to you today. I said, I can't talk to you today. Next day, I need to talk to you today. I said, I can't talk to you today. I'll talk to you when that, when, at the end of the week. She says, well, in the spirit of Matthew 18, <laughs> since you refuse to talk to me. I have decided to leave the ministry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But see, that was an ultimatum. Jezebel always give you an ultimatum. It was a manipulation tactic. It was meant to elicit a response from me, and it did. I said, you know, I said, well, I said, if that's what you feel you need to do, I certainly will not stand in your way. I said, but I will speak to you, as I told you at the end of the week. I'll speak to you at Thursday at 4 o'clock. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, okay, well, then I won't leave the ministry. I'll just wait till Thursday at 4. <laughs> I said, okay. So I called Thursday at 4. No answer. So I texted her. I said, well, I called you. You know, what's up? She goes, oh. My battery's about to die. I can't talk. I said, oh, well, plug in your phone. She says, no, the electricity is out the whole building. I said, well, walk downstairs to the Starbucks and plug in your phone. She says, no, I might never make it back up the stairs because the doctor said that I've had a relapse and I should be in the hospital. And I should have been in the hospital Monday and I haven't eaten all week. I'm starving. I'm not making this up, nor am I exaggerating. I said, well, I said, bless the Lord. Call me when you want. If you need something, let me know. She says, okay. I woke up the next morning with a tickle in my throat, which grew progressively worse. And I had to minister at a conference with Dutch sheets three days later. And I'm like, this is not a good thing. I need my voice. I was getting sick, and the Lord said, go uh, see how she's doing, this woman. So I said, how are you doing? She says, oh, I just got back from the pharmacy. The doctor says, this medicine will activate within three hours, and if I'm not better in three hours, I will have to go to the hospital. And I said, wow, that's terrible. I said, do you need some help? No, I'm fine. I said, okay. So I got in the shower, and the Holy Spirit said, go over there. So I texted her back. I said, I'm coming over there. She goes, I said, she goes, why? I said, well, because if you have to go to the hospital, I'm, I'm going to take you because you have family down here. You don't know anybody down here. You're new to the area. So I don't care how bad, you know, what a Jezebel spirit you got. If you, could, if you need to go to the hospital, I'm going to take you to the hospital. So she goes, no, 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 no. I'm fine now. <laughs> the medicine worked. I said, but you said it would take three hours to work. She says, oh, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm really fine. I said, well, she says, you haven't eaten all week, so I'm just going to bring you some food. She says, no, no, that's okay. I said, no, I'm, I'm coming over. She says, okay, well, bring me a smoothie. So I brought her a smoothie. Well, I realized that she has a massive autoimmune issue, a relapse from something. And I've got this thing in my throat, and I'm getting worse. So, but the Lord told me to go over there. So I went by Walgreens, and I bought, you know, those masks they wear? <laughs> of course, you can't just buy one. You have to buy the box of 100. <laughs> <laughs> So I got the whole box, because I'm nice. People read my articles in Charisma, and they say, you're mean. I'm like, no, I'm not mean. I'm mean to the devil. So I put this thing on, and I go over there, I knock on her door. <laughs> my glasses are fogging up, you know. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> And for the next hour and a half, she explained to me every intricate detail of how this disease had come back upon her and how even if they could stem the tide, that she would never be the same again. And she just had money to buy some certain herbs. It might cure her. And I mean, I almost pulled out my wallet and said, take some money, buy some herbs, just be healed. <laughs> so I said, after this hour and a half, I said, well, do you want to hear what happened to me this week? with this, this guy that was persecuting me and all the prophets had to get involved. And she says, no, not really. <laughs> so I told her anyway. <laughs> and at the end, I'm getting really sick. I've been there hours at this point. I'm really sick at this point. I'm really sick. I know that I, I've never been so sick in my chest. It was bronchitis, but I never had bronchitis. It was manifesting bronchitis. 
And she says, you know, before you go, she says, you remember that thing you said to me about how I was, you felt like I was controlling you, manipulating you? I said, yes, I do. I said, but I did not come here for that. I truly came over here because the Holy Spirit told me to. I just really want to make sure you're okay. And I, I didn't come to talk about that. She says, well, I want to talk about it. And I, she, I said, well, she said, no, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, I will. No, yeah, I know you've had a hard week. I won't do that. Yes, I think I must. She says, yeah, she goes, you remember you said that? I said, yes, I remember. And she says, well, the Holy Spirit, I've been fasting and praying, and he told me, he says, you're the one who's controlling and manipulating me. <laughs> and I went. <sighs> <sighs> Knocked the wind out of me. And I'm like, wow. So we talked for a few minutes. I went home. I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning really sick. I mean, so sick. I, I mean, I had to call my doctor and he had to call something in. It was a holiday. And my feelings were hurt. And what I learned in that moment, I learned two things. If Jezebel can't control you, manipulate you, silence your voice or pervert it, she'll try to wound you. Right. Because right. that's the way in. <clears throat> The hurt in the wound. And so the spirit couldn't take me out any other way. I'd said no to this, no to that, no to the other. Tried to wound me. And I realized my feelings were hurt. And I said, Jesus, I said, I don't want this wound to heal me. I ran immediately hit to him. You know, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. But if you won't let the sun go down on any other toxic emotion either, you can walk through that thing more quickly. Yeah. It might take you a minute. It took me a few weeks to process it. But I came out the other side. Yeah, amen. I saw that it was a spirit. And about that time, I got an email from her. She's like, how are you? I'm feeling so much better today. How are you? I said, well, you know, honestly, I said, my feelings are hurt. She says, ah, yeah, I thought that might be the case. She says, but when you're ready, when you're able, we'll walk through this together. Classic. And I said, no. We won't. I said, I see no path forward for you in this ministry or in my life. And I said, I know you don't have any family down here and that you were going to, you mentioned leaving and moving back home. I said, I can have a, a rental truck over there and some movers for you. I'll pay for it. If you want me to bless you in front of the congregation and release you, I'll do it. But I accept your resignation <laughs> and I wish you the best. Amen. It was a really bad trial. And then one came in right after her. It was bad. People with a Jezebel spirit, they look for those who are hurt or wounded and insecure, and they become their prophet, their teacher, and their guide. They draw people to themselves who become their eunuchs. People with a Jezebel spirit will try to guilt you. They'll try to tell you that you aren't operating in the fruit of the spirit or acting Christ-like. Yeah. You're just like those who hurt me. Jezebel will try to operate through people with insecurity, emotional instability, pride, arrogance, manipulation, and control. Advanced Jezebel spirits will actually start praying witchcraft prayers against you. Here's one last story, and then I'll move into some real practical things for the last few minutes here. My associate director, I've shifted her role now, but she was the associate director at the time. She had just lost her dad. She was going through a hard time. She got in a car accident. And this lady with the Jezebel influence, she says, you know... Karen is just not doing a good job. She's just dropping the ball. You know, and, and because, you know, I, I understand her father just died. She's grieving. So it would really be in her best interest, see, if she were to step down. And really, see, the Lord has prepared me because I was a, the an administrator at this huge prayer ministry day and night, night and day. And I could, I could, I could really be of, of help. You know, maybe one day she can, when she's healed, she can come back in. <laughs> and I said, I said, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. She says, oh, well, I understand. She says, yeah, I, that, I, I get it. You've known her a long time. She says, how about maybe I, I, I could be the director? And I said, well, there's only one problem with that See, I'm the director. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, well, you could be the executive director. I said, no. But see, I'm convinced that, that she, because then Karen came to me and she says, she says, you know, I feel like I'm just dropping balls. I'm just grieving. I'm going through it. Maybe it would be better if I stepped down and this other lady took my place. I'm convinced 
that this woman was saying, Lord, remove her from that position. Lord, you know that you've called me here to assume that role. Lord, remove her, God. Put her someplace else. And that witchcraft was hitting her mind. That strong confusion was hitting her mind. And she wanted to step out. She wondered if she was called from God. Just like Evan Roberts. Right. Horrible. It's very subtle, though. And we can never say we're an expert on these spirits because as soon as we do that, that's prideful. And then we get bashed. So if you're dreading confronting someone in your church, your workplace, or your family, there's, there's probably a spirit operating there. It could be fear. It could be Jezebel. I don't want to paint everything with Jezebel, okay? We can't, we, can't, we can't tolerate it. We've got to write these things down when we see them because Jezebel twists the facts. Right. And then we'll think we're crazy. Right. That's not what happened. Yeah. <clears throat> Tell some other people. Tell one or two people you can trust. Confront it quickly. Time is not on your side. They don't, remember, Jezebel, Jesus gave Jezebel space to repent. We need to give them a space. We need to confront it. We need to give them a space to repent. Well, what if it's my mom? Well, you don't have to bow to the manipulation. You have to honor your mom. You have to pray for your mom. But you don't have to be manipulated. You, you choose to be manipulated. Did you know that? Yeah, I didn't like that. That's okay. So how do you tell if you're under this Jezebel attack? Here's, here's a few ways, just quickly. Fear, unreasonable fear. Unreasonable fear. We all deal with fear sometimes. Unreasonable fear. Je remember Elijah in 2 Kings, he had, he had killed all the prophets. He had thrown them down. And all of a sudden, Elijah, uh, uh, Jezebel sends a messenger with a word curse, laced in fear. She said, I'm going to kill you, Je uh, Elijah. May the gods do this to me and more also if you're not dead by this time tomorrow. And he, he ran. He was in fear. He took off. Oh, mighty man of God ran for his life. Excessive fear. Fear that makes you want to run from your assignment. Fear. The second is isolation. When, when Elijah ran, the Bible says he left his servant behind. Remember, Evan Roberts was isolated. Remember, the spirit tried to isolate me from those who could speak into my life. Chased off those around me who might have discerned it. Isolation. Be gracious with the person, but please confront this thing. Yeah. Yeah. In a spirit of humility, not with accusation. Yeah. The goal is to get them delivered. Yeah. Right. The goal is to see them set free because see, but by the grace of God, there go you. Maybe, maybe you could have gotten hurt. Maybe you could have endured the suffering they did and not known how to take it to Jesus. Yeah. It could be you. So we want them to repent. But let me ask you a question as I, as I close. And you don't have to answer, but you, you might even ponder this. Some of you who have been through that season of disruption, some of you that have been through a three-pronged attack, some of you that have been uh, just through hell and back, you might just consider this over the next few days in prayer. But what are you letting into your life because you've tolerated that Jezebel spirit? What portal of hell, what sickness, what financial loss, what, what drama, what stress, what strain is manifesting in your life? Because you're tolerating this. Because you won't confront it. You're putting up with it. There's some benefit to you of just letting it lie. Let me tell you something. Whatever benefit you think you may be gaining from letting it lie, it's not worth it. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I have this against you. That you're tolerating this. See, if we're tolerating this, Jesus has something against us. But if we overcome it, the Bible says that the Lord gives us authority over nations. And this is a church with authority in the nations. Amen. And you're called to, to rule with Jesus in the nations. And since I overcame that spirit, that one particular attack... Europe has just completely opened up. I got invitations coming right and left from Europe to Amen. do school of the prophets in Europe. Amen. Who would have thought? Amen. Isn't that ironic? Because Jezebel hates the prophets. Amen. So I'm going to the nations of Europe, training the prophets. Hallelujah! Amen. So let's just pray and just break any ties that we might have and break that attack. Can we do that? Yeah. Don't get mad with me now. I'm trying to help you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you today for your anointing that breaks the yoke. 
Lord, help us to search our hearts even now and in these next days, God. Lord, if we have any common ties, if we're being influenced by, if we're agreeing with the spirit of Jezebel, God, would you show us that we might repent in the name of Jesus? Lord, if we're, if we're tolerating this thing, if we've opened the portal of hell over our life, if, if we've come into agreement or alignment, God, if we've got soul ties with someone operating in a Jezebel spirit that are unhealthy, God, we ask you to sever them now in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver us from the bonds of Jezebel. Deliver us from the spirit's clutches, God, in Jesus' name. Forgive us, Lord, for not discerning when your word tells us over and over and over to judge a thing and to judge a righteous judge, but to discern, to watch and pray, to be vigilant. Help us, God. Forgive us. We're so grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to repent because your word says that if, you, if we come to you and we ask you to forgive us, you'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Lord, cleanse us from the unrighteousness of Jezebel. Cleanse us from the, the immoral thoughts that Jezebel's tried to put in our hearts. Cleanse us, God, from the idolatry that Jezebel has led us into. God, cleanse us today. And let us not think more highly of ourselves than our ought, but let us be those who are just ever increasingly seeking your heart. And help us, Lord, to walk softly with those who are hurting, but not to allow ourselves, allow ourselves, allow ourselves to be manipulated. I come against that Jezebel attack over your life in Jesus' name. I come against that three-pronged attack of religion, witchcraft, and Jezebel right now in Jesus' name. And I break it in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you have nothing in us. And we break your assignment. We break your powers. And we say you must repay now in this next season. I call forth justice against the spirit of Jezebel in Jesus' name. Release that which belongs to us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, God wants a people of freedom. Amen. So if you've been battling, you know, I know that some here, you, you know, you might have uh, felt like you um, are disqualified. Like she said, you know, you, you feel like you're out of, you're out of uh, play here. Like there's there's nothing going for you, and there's there's even even that that passion, that desire for the Lord, um, it, you know, you feel dried up. If, if that's you, we, we have a prayer team here. We want to pray over you because that's not the spirit of the Lord, and it wants you to. Feel, I, it's happened to me many times. It doesn't necessarily like she said. We don't know how it all works. We just know that you get slimed by it where you feel like you, you just don't have the energy, you're exhausted, and that passion for that zeal for the Lord is gone. You know, the Bible says that the zeal of the Lord has consumed me. If that zeal isn't there, you know, you might be slimed by it. And, and it's not necessarily, I mean, some could be praying against you. I just know that it happens. Right. And I know that it's happened to me many times, and I didn't discern it. And I didn't know how to get out of it. I just felt like, you know, how many times I told Peter I was leaving our church. I am leaving the church. I am not coming to church anymore. That's it. I'm not gone. Not this morning, though. You know, it wasn't this morning. <laughs> uh -uh, we're good. We're good now. You know, but, you know, a lot of stuff comes against you. And his goal is to shut you down. Listen, the enemy doesn't care if you go to church 14 times a week. He didn't care. He just doesn't want you walking in the authority and power that God has given us. He doesn't want us walking with the passion of God and the zeal of God. Listen, we've all had heartache. We've all had disruptions, like she was saying, in our lives. But God is erupting a new thing. So if that's you and you're sensing something or you just want prayer, you know, come to agree, you know, just come on up. We have a prayer team. I'll call the prayer team forward. You know, we have the great I am in us. And the spirit of God. God is saying to us, I want you to walk in that, that, that place of absolute victory and absolute breakthrough. There is a breaker anointing here today that God wants to break through. So, come on up. Amen. So, you, know, you can do whatever you want to do. So, Lord, we just thank you for the Spirit of God. We thank you for the word that was released here today, Lord. We thank you that it did not fall on deaf ears. Lord, we have received the word of the Lord. 
And we decree and declare the word of God says that when the enemy, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will lift up a standard against us. And when the enemy's caught, the Bible says that we can demand sevenfold return. So Lord, we decree payback for what's been stolen from us. Amen. So Lord, we just thank you for it. We thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for turnaround. I'm telling you. I see by the Spirit of God, there have been blinders on people's eyes. There's been almost like cement-like weights on you that God is breaking off. And Lord, I loose the zeal of the Lord upon your people in Jesus' name, upon all of us, God. I mean, Lord, I just thank you, Father, for a hot, fervent, fiery, passionate heart for Jesus. So, God, we just loose that. We thank you, Father God. We rejoice in you. We thank you, God. We are the head, and we are not the tail. We thank you, God, for the zeal of God. Just say that, Lord, I thank you for the zeal of the Lord that's within me. Yes, Lord. Hope. Lord, we thank you, Father, for that Jehu anointing. We thank you, God, for that, that anointing of Elijah. We thank you, God, that for the anointing, there's that other guy, and I forgot his name, but God, we say that threefold anointing of these leaders. God, to take out the enemy in Jesus' name. So, God, I bless each and every person here. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.